Oh, oh, this is going to be one painful review that I'm actually going to take. Because I just watched a turkey on my 4K TV during Thanksgiving night. But luckily for us, we did have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Yeah, we had the turkey that we made, joining in with potato salad, salad, rice. We even had those turkey sandwiches later on. Yeah, they were delicious. But for our desserts, we had those pumpkin cookies that my sister made. They're totally the bomb. I love them. Joining in with the pumpkin bread and, of course, the pumpkin pie. And we did do some Black Friday shopping. We did it earlier. And we did some later on. We had to get some more clothes and stuff and that we need for the holidays and all. And of course, we needed the movies and video games. And, and of course, already since we got the 4K TVs and players and all. Yeah. Things are going great at this point. But unfortunately, it had been a tough week. Because we just lost our dog named Cupcake. Which we had her for 11 years. She was a beautiful dog. She fought so hard. I mean, she's a very tough fighter, no doubt. But we took great care of her, no matter what. You know, we fed her, we cleaned her, we did anything. But she's been having some health problems. She was getting weaker. I mean, she had cancer a long time ago, but that was taken away, thank goodness. So she was cancer free. But then she was getting all these moles, especially on her forehead, causing her to bleed too, because. It was irritating her really bad. That's why we had to take her to the bed for surgery. And I'm glad she recovered from that. I was hoping that there was going to be a miracle for her this year. But sadly it just happened so fast. I really miss her so much. But now she's in heaven. You know, and feel free for the pain that she's been going through. And hopefully she'll she'll be able to have a new life over there. She'll be able to see all the family of pets that we have in the past, and she'll be able to join with them. Yeah. It was terrible that this happened. I'm gonna miss you, Cupcake. I really will. Okay, now, now I'm just going to get my indulgence uh, straight for this one because, yes, the turkey that I saw on Thanksgiving night um, on Disney Plus, out of all streaming services here, we got another movie in the Home Alone franchise. It's the sixth one, or in some cases, a reboot of the original 1990 classic that we all know and love with Kevin McAllister you know battling those two crooks from burglarizing his house so that's why he sets all these booby traps and all to stop him so that way he can be safe and that way he hopes to pray for a miracle that his parents will come back from a long trip that they accidentally forgot him about, you know, after that fight, the buzz and all. Yeah. I mean, it's still a holiday classic. It will always be timeless, no matter what. Their sequels are getting worse and worse and much worse. Okay, I could deal with having the second movie because I did enjoy that one. I really thought it's as good as the first one. I even like the third film, which I think it's an underrated sequel. In fact, that film really deserves an apology because 
ever since we had the fourth movie, it just keeps going on and on and on. More of the same traps, more of these bad actors trying their best to be like Kevin McAllister, but they all failed to do so. And what do you know, it's just going to be the same thing over and over again. Only this time, we now have a British kid who's played by Archie Yates, who happens to be the actor from the movie um, Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, who would have thought they got uh, the kid from Jojo Rabbit who played Yoki. And that's a great film, by the way. And now this time, instead of the, the crooks, we get a husband and wife from another family. And their names are Jeff and Pam McKenzie, and they're both played by Rob Delaney and Ellie Kemper. Kemper. So yes, the movie is called simply Home Sweet, Home Alone, or I like to be referred to as Home Bittersweet, Home Alone. Yep, which happens to be the first film to be released by 20th Century Studios that's on a streaming service, Disney Plus, because we all know now that 20th Century Studios is owned by Disney, which used to be formerly known as 20th Century Fox. And this is the studio that brought us the Home Alone franchise. I still haven't even reviewed Home Alone 5 yet. And I would love to tear that one apart too. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to tear apart this one even more. I still think that Home Alone 4 is, is the most horrible sequel of the entire franchise because it really was an insult to the original. But again, we just keep getting more and more and more. In fact, um, Jeff's brother actually said it best um, in that one scene in the movie where they were watching this um, Star Wars clone. Yeah, he actually said it best. Why we make them when when they're not going to be as good as the originals? And this statement really shows it up right here. Well, you wouldn't believe what this plot is about. It's basically about a British kid who unfortunately was accused of stealing this ugly face upside down boy doll that um, Jeff's mother actually gave him and he was planning to sell them for two grand on eBay from this, um, this one uh, seller because that way it'll get enough money to pay for the house that they're going to stay in, you know, the mortgage and all of that. So, of course, I mean, we don't get the crooks. We just get these two, you know, racing to find the Dow inside the young boy's uh, house who's home alone while his uh, British mother joining in with his sister and his American father joining with his uh, kids and his father, they're about to leave to Tokyo for Christmas vacation. And I can guarantee it's, it's essentially the same plot as the original. We actually got Keaton Thompson to be in this movie. I'm shocked to say that, you know, one of my favorite actors, you know, out of uh, all that, Keenan Kill, Heavyweights, um, the Mighty Ducks sequels, and all. And I know he just recently had um, a TV sitcom that was on NBC. I'm not so sure if it got cancelled or not. I think it did. But it came out just recently, even though he's been a long cast member on Saturday Night Live. He just won an Emmy for. And he's still working on the show. It's just amazing that he's actually in a franchise that make Macaulay Culkin a star. But he plays a real estate agent um, that Jeff and Pam were offering because they're going to about to sell their home and they're going to be able to find another place to live you know, with their family that they brought in. Yeah, even that uh, Asian woman who actually had her son and they speak Spanish and all. Okay. 
it's going to keep going on and on, and I'm going to be able to review the whole thing. It's going to hurt so bad, but <laughs> here we go. Oh, and I, okay, one more thing. I know I'm sorry, but I just want to say one more. We also have a cameo appearance by Devin Rattray, who played Buzz in the original Home Alone. He makes an appearance in the film, except this time he works as a security guard, uh, yeah, security officer. So now we get to hear him use the, the exact same lines like he said in the original film. And the second one, too. What do you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's get right to it, because it is going to hurt me really bad. So it's Archie Yates, uh, Rob Delaney, uh, who was actually in the movie Deadpool 2, by the way. And he was recently in a show called Catastrophe. And he was in a movie called Hobbs and Shaw. Ellie Kemper, who I believe, uh, yeah, she's a comedian. I think she's been in other stuff. Uh, Asleen uh, B. Uh, Andy Daly. Keenan Thompson, of course. And all that, Keenan Kill, Heavyweights. Um, the, the two Mighty Ducks movies. Saturday Night Live. And all. Tim Simmons. Ali Makey, Pete Holmes, Chris Parnell, Katie Beth Hall, uh, Max uh, Eventon, Maddie Holiday, uh, Aiden and Ellen Wang, Mikey Day, Jim Rash, John Novak, Eddie G, and Devin Rattray. Yeah, from the first two Home Alone movies as Buzz. Where's Macaulay Culkin when you need him? I'm kind of surprised though because Macaulay Culkin did do a, a Google commercial that's in the spirit of Home Alone. So yes, <laughs> he's all alone as an adult. But he does use those uh, one of those uh, Alexa type devices and all. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, it's written by Mikey Day, Judy Sadell, which is based on the story by John Hughes, of course, who wrote the screenplay of the original film, which was directed by Chris Columbus. And it's directed by Dan Mazur, who, interesting enough, I mean, he's been a longtime writing partner and production for all the Sasha Baron Cohen uh, you know, material that he's done. I mean, such as Ali G, Barat, and Bruno come to mind. I find it hard to believe that he directed this, considering the fact that he didn't get Sasha Baron Cohen to make an appearance. Wow. What a waste. Here we go. The movie begins in Renekka, Illinois, where we meet a husband and wife team, Jeff and Pam McKenzie, who are both played by Rob Delaney and Ellie Camper, who are trying to sell their house by a real estate agent, uh, Gavin Washington, who's played by Keenan Thompson, who only gets like eight minutes of screen time. He's the best thing about the film, at least. He's probably getting some great salary, too, uh, joining in with Devin Rattray as Buzz. Well, we're going to get to him when I continue. They have not told their children, Abby and Chris, that Jeff had lost his job. Well, Pam's salary is not enough to keep their home because they're going to be planning on moving someday. And to make matters worse, Jeff's obnoxious and more successful brother, Hunter, had appeared for the holidays, uh, joining with his his Asian wife, May, and their son, Ollie, who eventually speaks Spanish. But during the open house, uh, Max Mercer, yes, the muffin top uh, British kid with glasses, played by Archie Yates, joined by his mother, Carol, played by Asleen B., 
They're just about to stop by to use the restroom because they had to go really bad. And then he later had a brief exchange with Jeff, during which what later revealed a box of old dolls, which includes the the ugly upside down boy one. Yeah. Which unfortunately turns out that since his mother had sent him those dolls that he had for years, maybe decades, maybe since he was a little boy, he found out that that it was on sale for two grand on eBay that's that's from a um, a buyer. So that will help them as you pay the mortgage and be able to save their home this way. Unfortunately, the doll was gone. They assumed that Max might have taken it. Oh, and here's something I noticed too, was that since Kena Thompson as Gavin had made an appearance, you notice that right next to him is actually a case full of uh, large uh, cans of orange soda. I was expecting, where's Kill Mitchell when you need him? Because he loves orange soda. He does, he does, he does. Okay. <laughs> oh, anyway. As Max and Carol returns home, the whole family is preparing to leave to Tokyo, Japan for their holiday vacation. Things were going pretty rough for Max because, of course, you know, he's pretty much being the goat of the family. So now, with nothing else to do or communicate, he decided to go straight to the garage, you know, and decided to watch uh, Looney Tunes on the BMW SUV van that's, that has, has a tablet inside. So that way he won't bore himself. So of course he actually has slept all alone in the SUV while Carol had left early joining in with the rest of her American family. So you have this American obnoxious uh, father, her husband with kids and, and his father. Um, she also has a daughter too. A British daughter. So they all left. Um, and they were about to leave just as soon as Jeff had arrived, you know, trying to find out uh, that Max did stole the Dow. And he was finding out uh, the security code so now he can memorize it and be able to find the key that's hidden inside the underneath the mat. But, you know, plus it was snowing outside. So, of course. Uh, he had to leave because he was afraid that he's going to get caught by the police and all. But yeah, he almost bumped into the neighbors. You know, he was just pretending like, yeah, I'm just checking the neighbors to see what's going on. And and, there, and then Jeff was about to rush by to church because unfortunately he did uh, send a message to them thinking that they bought some milk. He was going to get some more milk, but they already had a whole case of milk inside the refrigerator so it's like come on really so anyway they they rush by they're about to perform Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer you know with these bills and they had to make a and Jeff made a conversation with Pam about the Dow thinking that Max stole it so now their plan was to actually go back to the house and be able to find it right away as soon as possible but of course while Max is already home alone, you know, with the parents away, now he gets to do what he, that he's been dreaming about, being all alone by himself, you know, gets to, you know, pig out with all the junk food, you know, gets to play video games, slid down the, the iron board, and all this crazy stuff that he loves to do. Just like the first Home Alone, as we all know. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, everybody was trying to do the same thing, too, with the sequels. So, of course, he's starting to feel very lonely and all. He actually has a home bot that's an Alexa-type uh, device, but it only stuck in German, so it only speaks in German. 
They also misunderstood to think that he has a grandma who speaks German, so of course they're going to start bringing in the German language books so they'll be able to communicate. Oh, all this utter madness going around is going to get much into bigger trouble for these two. Yeah, and, and it only gets worse from there because at that point on, um, just when they're about to go inside the house, um, we meet Officer Buzz McAllister, yes, played by Deborah Rattray, another uh, actor that's probably the best part of the movie at least. In fact, he managed to use some of the lines from the original movie too, even the second one. Like, he even he begins to realize that some of the address that's being called in and, and it's starting to remind him when he was a, a young uh, teenage boy having to deal with Kevin a lot that yeah he's always bullying him and all he's like saying that you know how bratty Kevin is I mean we all remember how we lost him and he had to stay at home alone and all and, and then he's just saying nice try Kevin you little trout snuffer <laughs> while he was just eating a burrito <laughs> I was just making the a police uh, call. <laughs> Unbelievable. And of course, um, he was also trying to make sure if if Jeff and Pam doesn't get caught, you know, by the cop. And even though um, Max did call Buzz uh, to see if they can arrest him, but <laughs> no dice. But luckily, they didn't get arrested, so they put they got them off the hook. Then Carol discovers that Max has been left home alone, so, the, so she had to buy a ticket to head back. The McKenzie's had head to church the next day, where they run into, once again, Gavin, telling them that they have a buyer, and he needs to decide at the end of the year, which they could put an extensive pressure on them right away. Meanwhile, Max had came by, because he's already lonely already, that... Um, He's about to um, grab a toy, which turned out to be this uh, this Nerf gun that he got. You probably saw the the poster already. Jeff's uh, son actually came by, was ready to donate. This uh, church lady, on the other hand, has already Max was telling her that you know I'm already home alone. My parents are away, and I think maybe I need some cheering up. She did gave him the, the gun, and now he says, I should go to church more often. And of course, you know, both Jeff and Pam are, are chasing him around, hoping that their, their next plan was to actually go straight to the house as soon as they can, only to realize that they were at the wrong house. Yeah, of an African-American family. So, of course, they just destroyed the, this... Uh, small house it had to be a dog house basically so and then they had to escape you know they're already getting hurt and all and then now they they're about to rush by because already Max is setting up all the traps yeah just like the original movie and boy are the traps so painful and brutal than ever before but almost as brutal as the second movie as opposed to the third, fourth, and even fifth for that matter. So now, of course, Jeff and Pam are going to get into deeper pain. I mean, they're going around driving in their SUVs and they're going to start slipping by and crashing into the pole. And then next thing you know, they're going to try to you know, ski around into the driveway, trying to enter the house, but of course... You know, they're going to get hurt really bad. I mean, <laughs> Pam's going to get electrocuted. Uh, Jeff's going to be, you know, getting hit by these, uh, <laughs> those pool balls that um, Max just set up. Yeah, so hit him, hit him in the forehead, and then they're going to hook him up with uh, those uh, virtual reality. So thinking that he's, he's in the, the mountains, you know, doing some... You know, mountain climbing, he's just jumping to the next cliff, but of course he's actually jumping straight into uh, into the shelves where it has all this all this dangerous uh, glass around. 
all this utilities that's in there. Yeah, he's going to get hurt really bad. And same goes with Pam. You know, who wants up, you know, getting caught by all these Legos because they hurt like a bitch. And then they're just going to keep on chasing Max around, trying to find Adele until they get into more, you know, disasters. And even worse, by the end of the, the climax, that's when Max was beginning to find out the truth. While they were going to continue to shoot some more, you know, darts and um, some more uh, pool balls and more of this other, all these uh, traps that he set up to. Um, that's when they started to make an apology and finding out the truth that yes, Max did not steal the Dell. And, and the fact that the main reason why Jeff and Pam had came over was because, again, they're about to save their home. They needed the money really bad until <laughs> the, uh, the chandelier had fell all the way down on them. Luckily, Max didn't get killed or anything. Or I'm surprised because both of them almost got killed really bad. So to make all this stuff up, they just found out that the Dow has been found um, by um, Ollie because he had it the whole time. Uh, while they're already making conversation since the parents are already gone, but already Carol is finally making it home as soon as he can to finally found Max. So now they're, since Jeff and Pam already found him anyway, so now they can finally go back home while they can stay home for the holidays and you know retreat their all, all their mistakes but of course that's what will lead to what's going to happen a year later because already Carol just found out that his house is, a, is already trash so of course they already had fixed all all the repairs that they did inside the house and they also paid the mortgage for the entire home once they sold the Dow. So now they finally uh, got together as a family to have a nice delicious um, Christmas dinner. And hoping to get to meet the neighbors more often. <sighs> this reboot is a filthy animal. It makes the fourth and fifth movies look like masterpieces. And I ain't lying. The kid is just a spoiled brat. I mean, I may have liked him in Jojo Rabbit, but I sure as hell did not like him in this movie. And neither did anybody in the film, except for Keenan Thompson and Devin Radtray, which, again, and I'm going to keep saying that they're the only good things about this movie, even though, you know, they paid a lot of great salaries to appear. They did everything they can. And at least they are more funnier than anybody in this dreadful, painful experience that I had to sit through. The traps are not exciting. I mean, I forgot to mention that there is this one scene where Max actually did made himself a, a soda bomb. You know, remember the whole uh, 2006 uh, trick where they used the Mentos inside these uh, Diet Cokes where... It can cause a soda bomb. Well, this is exactly what he did. But he bought like a whole uh, case of uh, bottles of soda that he had to put in with all his Mentos to, to use a soda bomb on Pam and actually use the phrase why my mom said soda is bad for you. <sighs> and there, then there's even more painful traps that he threw in too. And then he tries to actually use the home bot to switch to English, but it's not exactly in her memory bank here <laughs> or any other because, you know, they didn't sign for the security home. The cast is bad, no doubt, once again. I mean, bad acting all around, lame jokes, snowpocalypse, come on, really? Um... All these gags and all these uh, scenes that try to rip off the original did not work at all. 
They used modern technology, I know, as I mentioned already, and it was pretty boring at times. I barely laugh in the movie, and I mean I barely. But, you know, I, I love slapstick comedy, granted, but I could have had something that's done well. It's not done very well. I mean, the editing wasn't well thought off of. Not it was the cinematography. I mean, of course, being shot in 4K and all. <laughs> and, and the way the story goes did not work. Not at all. Okay, I we know this kind of plot before. It doesn't even work well for a Home Alone movie. It sure wasn't a good idea to actually have the parents as the villains. Okay, this was a dumb idea. I, I almost felt bad for them because they all got stuck in all these stunts that they had to pull through just to find this stupid doll. What a waste. And it's definitely not the movie that's as heartwarming as they think. It's just another example of manipulation. They even tried to copy the scene in the original film, you know, where Kevin's mom was at the airport. She was rushing by, trying to go back to her son, but she's still stuck in the airport, trying to find a flight that's available, but everything's canceled. Well, they try to do something like this, but you have this Asian airport employee that's about to tell her that, that it's canceled and you have to calm down and all. And this awkward pose. I mean, come on, man. I don't need this. 2020 was a bad year as it is. You're trying to make this a lot worse than it already was, too, with, especially with this pandemic that was going around. I mean, I just spotted one of them wearing a mask, too. Everyone looked like they just weren't wearing at all. But, what can you do? Everything has to be realistic these days. It's really not fun. Just avoid this movie. I mean, it's, it's best to just avoid the later sequels and just stick to the first two movies. As well as the third movie. I don't care what anybody says. I would rather watch the third movie over the fourth, fifth, and even this version. Because it definitely is a filthy animal. And it deserves to be destroyed. Especially when I had to see this on Thanksgiving. I never thought I would see turkeys on screen, but I spotted one. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, that's Home Bittersweet, Home Alone, as I like to refer to, and I give the movie, what else, zero stars. Avoid this at all costs. Just watch the first two films, because they hold up today. They're classics. And also, the third film is underrated. At least it sets up its own story. Not trying to insult your intelligence in some ways. I thought this was at least clever. More than any of them. Because they all suck. The, the four, fifth, and sixth ones, that is. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Much later. Bye.